In this example, we're going to look at how to do a paired sample t-test, a paired two sample t-test in Excel using the data analysis tool. Now in this example, we're looking at OCBs, that's organizational citizenship behaviors that employees perform. So organizational citizenship behaviors are, are doing things beyond one's job description to help other people out, like um, uh, picking up somebody else's mess or bringing coffee in to the office or uh, helping somebody else out on a computer who's having a problem. Just something that that's, you do good to help other people out. Now, in this situation, there was a office move, and the uh, the uh, um, the supervisors or the the managers want to find out if the uh, employees are still helping each other out because now with this office move, they're not sitting as close to each other. So, what we have is we have before and after ratings of OCBs. We've got the supervisor rating of five employees before the move and the supervisor ratings after the move. And our hypothesis is that uh, the um, hypothesis is that uh, OCBs have gone down uh, since the move. Now this is a one-tailed hypothesis. Uh, because we're just predicting that the OCBs have gone down because they're sitting farther away and people don't help each other out as, as much. So let's, uh, um, um, let's go to our data analysis tool. So we go to data and data analysis, and that should be installed. And you can watch the video on how to install the data analysis tool pack if you don't have it installed yet. It's free, it comes with Excel. Press that, and we are going to go to the t-test, the paired two samples of mean. Now, this is paired because we've got two scores for the same unit of analysis, the same employee. Now, we could be measuring uh, uh, husbands and wives in the same couple. We could do before or after scores with an individual. But whenever we have the scores the two in the two groups where each one corresponds to another, we've got a, a paired sample. Uh, uh, and so we'll use the paired two, two sample t-test um, in Excel. So I press OK. And now the variable one input is going to be the supervisor rating before move. So I select the whole column, including the uh, label in the top. And I go to the variable two rays and I choose the supervisor rating after move, select the whole column. column. And like almost all t-tests that we do, we will um, put a hypothesis, hypothesized mean difference of zero. And we have labels because we have the words in the top. Those are the labels. And the output range, I want it to be on the same sheet. So I click here, then I click in the box, and I will put them here, and I press OK, and we get a lot of uh, data. Let's round it off by going home, number, choose number, so we have two decimal points. Let's widen the column so that we can read these. And we've got the the different statistics here, the supervisor rating before move and the supervisor rating after the move. And what do we have? Okay, so before the move, it was 7, and after it was 5.6. Okay, so so far that fits our hypothesis. People aren't uh, helping out each other as much. But is this significant? We've only got a sample of five people. So we've got the uh, degrees of freedom, and we've got uh, the T statistic, 1.6 isn't very high, and we've got the one-tailed P test of 0.16. So it's not significant, because P has to be less than 0.05 to uh, uh, be uh, uh, significant. So how would we write up the results here? Let's look at how we could do this in APA form. We could say OCBs were hypothesized 
to decrease after a change of office location. In a small sample, and we put n equals 5, OCB's, OCB's, whoops, OCB's uh, decreased after a move from the mean equals 7.00 to uh, mean equals 5.6. Now it would, um, let's see, um, we, uh, we could report the standard deviation also. Let's, uh, let's do that because when we, it's, uh, so we've got uh, the variance from 2.5 and so the uh, standard deviation before, so SD before equals, and then we have to take this equals the, uh, um, we're going to put an Excel command. The, remember the variance is the square of the standard deviation. So I'm going to put equals F9, F9, and then the square root, which is the kind of like that little up arrow. I think it's called a caret 0.5. And so that gave us a standard deviation of 1.58 before the move. So let me put that there. SD equals 1.58 and then um, let's do the standard deviation after and that's going to be the square root of the variance afterwards that's g so equals g uh, 9 uh, and then the up arrow 0.5 that's a, how you do a square root, and it's 2.41. So let's go back to here and put standard deviation equals 2.41. It's always good to have the mean and the standard deviation for any sample that you have so, so that you can get an idea of what the distribution is. So uh, we've got the... Uh, standard deviation there. Uh, however, this change was not significant. Uh, and then we have, we can report our T statistic. We've got control I, T, whoops, turn off the italics, space equals, and our T stat was 1.16. And uh, we need to report the degrees of freedom. Well, let's go back there. And we, with a T statistic, we put the degrees of freedom immediately after the T. Uh, and we had four degrees of freedom. Now, we don't want those in italics. I'm going to highlight those and turn off italics. equals 1.6, uh, then we put p-value, so the p goes in italics, control i, p, control i, space, equals 0.16, period. All right, so that's how we could report this in APA format, that we performed a um, two-sample uh, matched pairs t-test uh, on this uh, small sample, to see if the OCBs had gone down. And in the sample, they went down, but the difference wasn't significant.